Welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. My name is Monica McCain-Sanchez, and tonight we have a great guest who is Will Sanchez, who has been on the Community Board for many, many years. The Community Board in the Upper East Side comprises of the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island, and listens to issues for the community. The Communications Committee brings this program, which has been on the air for 15 years, and Will is here to explain a little bit about the history. Thank you, Will, for coming. My pleasure, Monica. We should also mention that we're honored and privileged of being testing these new studios on 38th Street. Yes, and it's a brand new facility for Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and we want to start off by giving a big shout out to the staff at Manhattan Neighborhood Network who are incredible professionals who really make this show shine, and also to your colleagues, Susan, Susan and Gloria. So I was going to get the last names, but maybe I shouldn't. People might start Googling them. That's right. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, so tell us a little bit about the history of CBH Speaks program. Well, it's a fascinating and long history. Technically, it'll be 15 years starting this September of 2023. Our first show was with David Liston, who was the chair, and you were the, the host. So time flies. Yes, it does. How many programs have been put together and aired? So September 2008, we did show number one, our premiere. Since then, we've done, in the 15 years, we've done about 130, maybe 135, that kind of range. Um, most of them, half-hour shows. In fact, they're all half-hour shows. If we had to do a one-hour show, we would break it up into two parts. So we have a few two-parters. And as you remember, most of, initially, most of our guests were committee chairs of the community board. And then we expanded to include elected officials like Carolyn Maloney. I mean, these are names. Oh, I remember we had Letitia James when she was the okay. advocate, who is now the attorney general of New York State. Uh, we've had quite a few very substantial guests on the Liz program. Liz Kruger is another, yeah. Jose Serrano, mm -hmm. Ben Kalos, mm -hmm. Dan Garotnik. So, so we were very fortunate in covering all the local electives, mm -hmm. including the Manhattan Borough President. We had Gail Brewer. We, we tried to have uh, Scott Stringer, but uh, interestingly, his staff would only give us 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and of course, this is a half-hour show. What stations can people view this program on? Okay. The, the best way to view the programs is twofold. You can go to the Manhattan Neighborhood Network scheduling, and they can look for Community Board 8 Speaks. So technically, our name on the uh, schedule is Community Board 8 Speaks. We short have cut it, you know, CB8 Speaks. But the other way, of course, is to go to our YouTube channel called CB8 Speaks and just Google that within YouTube and you can uh, make a marathon weekend of community board. Uh, That's right. Eating popcorn and drinking soda. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, uh, there are episodes prior to 15 years ago before we took control of this. I call this really iteration three. There were two of prior iterations. This is what I call the David Rosenstein era, because he's the one that encouraged us to continue it. So before we did the David Rosenstein, the, the Peels under Ken Mills did a bunch of shows. Most of them, they did it outdoors, outside the studios. So they would go to meetings, to board meetings or forums, and they would re record, and then they would, uh, you know, edit it and put it up. And so those episodes, many of those are available on YouTube as well. I call that the second iteration. There was an actual an iteration I just discovered recently that was actually hosted by Eminem's own Rich DeFelli. I'm here with Rich Speciali from DVTV Live. So Rich, what is the most important thing to know when shooting in the open studio? The most important thing to know is what time it is. There's a number of things to do, and if you don't know what time it is, you don't know what your schedule is, you don't know what you have to do, probably something very important is going to be left out. 
I'm Arlene, and this has been MNN 30. I'm so excited. Rich, who is an artist, a true artist in, in lighting in particular. The man is amazing. Well, he's been, he's been here since, I think, childhood. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he tells me that he has old, you know, I guess crazy formatted VHS and, you know, maybe uh, Betamax, who knows, of those recordings. So we're hoping one day to get those, uh, those legacy programs and have those streaming. So we're very excited that this is our 15th year with uh, Community Board A Speaks. The future will be interesting because of the pandemic. The Community Board continued investing in media. And one of the things that they, one of the other Community Board members was introduced something called CB8 Zooms. So this is a separate media production where to Zoom and I just want to break in here briefly to say uh, thank you very much for being here and helping us to inaugurate this series. And I also want to thank Lori for uh, all of her hard work in putting this together. So I just wanted to briefly add my own thanks to, uh, to both of you for, for putting this all together. So we interview other people about their contributions to the community board. And in fact, I think you had the chance to interview the creator of CB8 Zooms. Right. It's, it's a definitely a different approach because I think one of the original missions that you and Dave Rosenstein were looking to do is to expand the reach of Community Board 8's message to the public because so many people don't know what a community board does, uh, how important it is. And a lot of people will, when we go to community board meetings, have will say to the board members, I didn't know what a community board was until I had a problem. And it's so influential what the community boards do that uh, you and Dave were working to, to expand this because the, the outlets are, are vast. There are, I guess, three or four cable operators in Manhattan and beyond who carry this program. And then, as you've mentioned, it's now on YouTube. You have a legacy website, but you're trying to get everything onto YouTube. So you have that where Zoom is, it's on uh, the internet through Zoom, I'm um, going through a link to get to it. So it's, it's another touch point to get the message out on what the community board does, particularly for the Upper East Side. But maybe if people outside of our area see that who are in the New York City metro area, they will then understand what their own local community board does. Because right. they do have many similar committees some are different. I don't know if others have communications committees, but certainly they, everyone has a land use committee. Uh, what other committees are, are comparable between the various community oh, boards? They all have street life committees right. because uh, everybody has restaurants and bars and that needs to be managed. Well, can you explain to people what a street life committee name? Because that's kind of like, I think they borrowed that name from a song from the 1970s. A great song, but what does that committee do? Well, it's an advisory committee. So many of the people that come forward are opening up a restaurant or they're renewing a license. So they review those establishments. It could be a bar, it could be a restaurant, it could be uh, anything that serves food or liquor. And uh, there are some as you can imagine, in New York City, there are rules and regulations about what hours can you operate or they're interested in, in the hours, they're interested in their, how they're going to fit in with the, with the community. They invite the community to come in, establish a restaurant. They want to know they're good neighbors. So it's a lot of work on that committee because you need to know all the rules and regulations. You've got to work very closely with the liquor authority. And since we're only advisory, so... If we approve something, oh, that's great. You know, the, uh, the liquor license that the liquor authority loves that and they approve it. 
if we disapprove something, it may or may not go through unless we take the extra step of writing a letter to, to explain what the situation is. So, uh, so all the community boards that will have a street life, but not all of them will have a show called Community Board N Speaks. A community Board 8 has the most programs. Some of the other community boards I have done shows because they see what we've done. And sometimes uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network will sponsor a community show and you know, you know support them in the hopes that they will you know grow and prosper in terms of the media. So it's still a a growing and much a needed thing, but but because of Zoom technology, there are like you mentioned, there are other opportunities to show the media. I want to actually go back to the whole street life thing because as you were speaking, I want to mention the audience. So street life, they have certain a certain mission, and this is different from the street fairs committee, which is different from the transportation committee. So we've got all these things happening on the streets of New York, handled by three different committees. And they all will intersect sometimes. Um, and then we also have a landmark. So you're getting away from the street and the sidewalk onto the building. Um, but beyond, those are the kind of traditional committees that a lot of the community boards have. But we also have the community boards very responsive to what's going on in society. So years ago, established a youth and education committee. And more recently is a social justice committee. Um, what are some of the other newer committees that, that you can recall? Well, newer committees, well, Parks Committee, of course, has been around forever, and every community board has a Parks Committee because parks are very important. Some of the other committees, veteran committees, you know, mm -hmm. some come and go, like the veterans will meet not every month, but maybe three or four times a year. So some committees, like Street Life, that would have to occur every month. Mm -hmm. because that's a very busy committee. Some other committee, like the veterans, they may only be three times a year. So like you said, to try to be in tune with the community. In addition to standing committees, they will have task force. They're kind of ad hoc, but some go on for a long time. For instance, when the planning was starting with 2nd Avenue uh, subway, there was a, a task force that went on for 15 years. Um, there is a street vendor committee that's been going on for almost as long because that is just... Um, let's say, a situation which just doesn't stop, but is uh, the chair of that committee, Michelle Birnbaum, is very influential, and she testifies a lot at city council hearings, and she knows the laws inside and out and is influential in getting better laws on the books. Um, but that's a challenge. Uh, can you think of some other task force that have been around? Oh, this, uh, we have so many. We had, of course, the famous 197A mm -hmm. that helped to build the park. I think it's called the uh, Green. It's named after someone who never gets enough recognition, that's and we right. are forgetting Mr. his name. Mr. Green. It's interesting. Well, almost Andrew Haswell. Haswell, that's right. I was delighted to be able to participate in this discussion about Andrew Haswell Green with borough historian Michael Michonne. I've, heard, I've known of Andrew Green through Michael for many, many years now. And my role on the community board back in 2006 involved a committee called the 197A Committee. That designation, 197A, is the chapter in the city charter that allows community groups like community boards to tell the city, agent, city and the city agency how they'd like their community planned. And at the, at the time, the, the East River Heliport at 60th Street had been closed due to a fatal accident some years before, and the land was just sitting idle and fallow. The city had no plans for it. So a group of us on the community board, Helene Simon, who's no longer with us, Judy Schneider, my wife and myself, and several others got together, organized the 197A committee, and said, let's see, we, let's see if we can make a park at the East River, because Community District 8 is bereft of parks. We have one, one of the least amounts of open space in the city. And so if we can make a public park where a heliport had been, it would be a great asset to the community and a benefit to all the residents here. So the long story short, the 197A plan 
from 2nd Avenue and 59th and 6th Street East to the river and north to 63rd Street was approved by City Council in 2006. Several years after, Andrew Hazel Green Park came into being as a result of the efforts of Michael and Adrian Benefee. And that's, a, that's the end of my story. Thank you. The Haswell Green Park, that, that, that came about because of a 197A program. And that was also long term, like that was a 20 year thing. So, but that raised an interesting, our final note about the community board. Term limits have been, have been introduced. Mm -hmm. So our community board members that have been appointed recently will be on the community board for, I believe, eight years, and then they rotate off. Technically, they can come back, but there's, there's an implication there, like the 197A. That took 20 years to do. So certain things are going to change because you, you, you're not going to have members that are going to last 20 years that can make things happen. Uh, like the 197A uh, and other initiatives, like landmarks, sometimes protecting a, a, a building because of, the, of where it is takes years and years and years of knowledge, of institutional knowledge. Eight years, most community board members are just getting warmed up. It takes a long time to develop the expertise. Yeah, we've had a couple of programs about the landmarks uh, committee and I'd have to say, I mean, all the committee meetings are still remote and they're on Zoom. That is one committee that I think is really vibrant in person uh, when I've been to them because you can see the mock ups better. They're just not tiny screenshots and you can see all the, the different people coming in and out. Um, I miss the in person meetings. Uh, they've tried to bring them back, it still is not viable yet. What do you think will, will be the next generation of CB8 Speaks? You've said there are three generations. Do you think there's going to be another generation? Well, yes. I mentioned term limits, so you and I are, have another three years or so to do this. And uh, we, we have introduced... Wait a minute. I'm a public member. Am I being term limited? Oh, that's a good question. You serve at the pleasure of the, the chair, so uh, you can go on and on and on and on. <laughs> but, um, but during the pandemic, we also got our own equipment. So we're able to do, and we have done, some shoots outside. We're filming today's program outside of one of the buildings due to the pandemic because we want to be extra careful. So it's a little breezy, but it's very invigorating. And of course, we can bring them back in and show it on, on Manhattan Network television. So we want to continue that. We want to want to maintain our presence on the actual TV stations, the Manhattan neighborhood, neighborhood TV stations. So that will continue because we have our own equipment. Um, and Zoom will, of course, develop. Mm -hmm. And then that's, I, I like that because that's independent of us. So that forces other people to, to be their own creative forces so they don't have to rely on somebody else. And so I'm very pleased in how that that's growing in its own little space. And so I think the promise and the potential is still very great, especially if you continue to partner with Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Well, thank you, Will. And thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight at CB8 Speaks and please come to the website, cbm.com, where you can see the schedule of meetings for the full board meeting and for committee meetings. And there's also a link for past episodes of CB8 Speaks. And see you at the community board meeting. Dave has been a member of Community Board 8 for 30 years. He started getting involved trying to save Rupert Park and is now the co-chair of the Communications Committee. Unlike most committees that have regular monthly meetings or, or uh, hearings, 
Uh, our committee is really a back office. It's a service committee that serves the board. So we have two primary functions. One is um, the CB8 Speaks, which is a show that uh, began in the early 90s, uh, went into a, a hiatus, then we uh, picked it up again. Um, and we're trained here at Manhattan Neighborhood Networks on how to use the equipment, gradually graduated to this uh, studio, which is much more sophisticated, and I have no clue on how to use the, <laughs> the, uh, the production side of it. Um, the other side of the, 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 the uh, committee's work is um, <clears throat> related to news coverage of the Upper East Side, and that's something that we do for board members. Uh, we do a report, a uh, committee report once a month, which is made available to board members uh, covering the news from various uh, media sources. Uh, because we're public officials, we can make uh, those stories available to other public officials, but not to the general public. So that's not something that, uh, that we can you know, simply put out, because uh, that would be a copyright violation. What we do, though, is as I go through that research every day with 20 or 30 Google Alerts and other printed materials, newspapers, is identify the stories of interest to the community and I send the, uh, the link from the website, as well as the title of the story, to another member of the committee, um, Sophia James, who puts it on our Facebook page. We try to make available interesting stories that you can go click on the link to and go to their, their website, which is no copyright violation whatsoever. We also uh, support the, um, there's four large scale uh, street fairs, two in the spring, two in the uh, fall, and the community board has a booth there to kind of talk to the public and we've taken that on as a, as a mission to make sure that it happens and, and push uh, board members to come and give two hours of their time for that. From time to time we have had uh, actual meetings with uh, notices to the public, very few of them. One was related to uh, uh, the city was very, very slow in signing its contract with the cable companies. So Time Warner, um, Comcast, uh, Fios, they were all dragging their feet, and this particular institution, Manhattan Neighborhood Networks, which is funded by contributions from all of the cable companies uh, to provide public access television, was using really rickety equipment. It was breaking down. And when they told us about it, we thought, well, we, you know, we're only one community board, but we'll hold a hearing. We'll bring people in, ask them what's going on, how it can be uh, accelerated so this contract will be signed, the money will start flowing again here. And actually, we made a difference. We rebuilt the website. We didn't rebuild it. Actually, a member of this committee, um, who is now the city councilman <laughs> from my district, Ben Kalos, is a computer whiz and has built a number of websites, and he built it for us. No charge. He just did it. He taught Will, uh, my co-chair, how to uh, take the tapes from this show, which are huge, humongous television tapes, convert them into a small file that can be put on our website. So it's now you can go to the Community Board's website and see not only this taping, but other, other shows. In a nutshell, that's it. I have to correct you. I haven't been on the board 30 years. I actually uh, came on the board in 92. I was on for eight years. When I finished this term, it would be an additional 10 years. Hmm. There was a gap in between. And I didn't uh, mention it when we spoke before the show, but I was actually on Community Board uh, four for five years in the 80s. I worked for a manufacturer there. Still a long time with a long commitment. It's a commitment. long time. It's a long time. It's public service, and I, and I like it. I like it a lot more being on the board where I live. Because in Board 4, I didn't live there. My company was concerned about the, the, the loss of uh, space for manufacturing. Mm. We were printers. Uh, but I didn't know the issues in the neighborhood. Right. Now I do. Right. What's, what's caused you to stay on the board for so long? Is it that you live here and that the issues are more tied to what you're doing on your day-to-day -day basis? <sighs> It is. It's, it's also because the long, I've been on the Upper East Side for 50 years, mm -hmm. and it's my community. My, my heart is in the West Side, but I haven't been there since I was a teenager. Um, I know the city. I care about the city. Uh, I was trained as a journalist, and I have that kind of a mind that's interested in details and how things work. I like being part of the uh, solution rather than the problem, mm -hmm. as we said back in the 60s. And, um, and I've seen little things change as a result of what I've been able to accomplish, and that's a really good feeling. Sure. And I have a lot of tolerance for frustration at long <laughs> meetings. You're a PR professional, so what sort of PR methods has the Communications Committee used and maybe not utilized, have changed over the years, um, and what could we be doing better to communicate to the public what we're talking about and what we're working on as a community board? It's a delicate dance because the policy of this and other community boards is that the only person that 
speaks for the community board is the board's chair. So um, as a PR person, when I was representing clients, I would very often end up being quoted because I was trying to tell their story. Uh, in our case, it's more a matter of building relationships with journalists so that when there's something interesting that's coming up, um, if I call them or email them, they'll return my call mm. or email. And I can tell them, you know, we're having a meeting on the future of Second Avenue. Uh, somebody from the borough president's office is coming in to talk about what might be done in relating to zoning to try to save small businesses as the towers begin to go up and the, the walk-ups come down. Um, and a reporter will show up. So it's, it's that kind of relationship building. Sure, that makes sense. The biggest problem we have is not so much communicating what we've done as telling people what we're going to do. Mm. And that's what we call posting. Uh, posting has always been a problem. We, we actually go out, the board office as well as board members go out and put notices on lampposts and, and street furniture. Nobody else can do that. Mm. But because we're a government agency, we can. Uh, saying that a, a hearing is gonna be held on such and such. Uh, we do very large scale email blasts but a lot of people don't know the community board exists and they don't they couldn't care less they don't really think about their city how it functions and how they could be involved until there's a notice about a drug treatment program opening mm -hmm. up on 60th street and mm -hmm. then people immediately pass it around to each other they come to the meeting they complain we didn't know i actually heard one woman at, at a meeting say well i did see something on a lamppost but i don't read lampposts <laughs> well our budget is very small. We're right. a city agency. We have enough to pay the rent on the office, to pay for three or four employees, to do some uh, mailing, to maintain a very sophisticated website that has a humongous number of documents of sure. the things that we're hearing. But we can't send certified letters to every building. Right. Um, it's always going to be a challenge. And all I can say is our website is very easy to find. It's CB. C like community, B like boy, the number eight, M for Manhattan, cb8m.com. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to remember. Right. Look at it.